Well, here we are again, back at the Conf Lab with Nate Cartledge, which is me. Hey, I'm so humbled and stoked to have you in this space with me today. Let's tap on in. All right, before we get started, we just want to thank our great friends at Studio 6 Burley on the Gold Coast. They are such a great support to me and the Conf Lab helping us get this out to you all the time. So if you're a content creator, if you have a, a long-term podcast or you're looking to start a podcast or you need a studio for anything, reach out to them at Studio 6 at Burley on the Gold Coast. They are amazing. Thanks again, guys. That's, that's awesome, mate. So father of two now, uh, your daughter is... She's two and a half. Going, going on, half going on you, 13 almost. <laughs> yeah, two, and a, two and a half going on, 22 and a half. Actually, my daughter is our producer and she runs all, most of our businesses. Yeah. And so she's sitting in the studio nice. too and she was exactly yeah. the same. <laughs> two and a half and she was always going on 22 and a half. <laughs> and now it's, it's full circle. She's back with there me and, and looks after everything. Hey, well, so, you, you've done something um, right you, there, Nath. <laughs> I think I, I think so. <laughs> uh, it wasn't by design. It was probably more by accident. Uh, so here we are today with Carl Hewan. He is a functional medical practitioner and I am uh, beyond uh, humbled to have a man of his caliber on our podcast to bring some real data and real information, but it's not just scientific data we're going to be hearing. We're going to be hearing some real life information from a real functional medical practitioner and uh, he's a husband and a father of two, one new one and one two-and-a-half-year-old little girl. And um, he's a frother of life, this guy. I love his energy every time. He's my functional medical practitioner, and that's how I know him. That's how I got him. And I met him through a really good friend of mine, Brett Robbo. And and every time I get on um, the Zoom with Carl, and we've had a few moments just to get my health uh, pattern starting to work properly. Just the energy that comes out of the hour that we have together, it, it lasts me for, for days, honestly. So <laughs> stoked to have you here, mate. Oh, very very kind words there, Nathan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, I love, love you know, sharing and, and adding some value where I can and extremely grateful for, uh, for you reaching out and looking forward to it. Awesome, mate. So I asked this question and you, if you've, you may have heard it a few times, but I ask this question of everybody. It's no one gets away from this for me. And um, and and you're a functional medical practitioner, and you are you you've, you're a father of two. You're you're a, a husband. You you care about people. All that's a, a doing thing. And outside of our doing, our, before our doing is our being. And and it's it's really important for people to understand that we we need to learn how to operate from our being. And then our doing comes second. And so on that premise, who is Carl? Carl, good, great, great question. Um, or, uh, how deep are we going here, Nathan? Are we going beyond Carl or are we, we, we just talking about the, uh, the, the, the form Carl? Um, but, but <laughs> we're, we're, we're going beyond Carl. We're going as deep as you can go, my friend. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I love how you put the, the being. It's so, so important and it's – conversations I have on a, on a day-to-day basis with with my clients looking to optimize their health and well-being. We live in a world where we are surrounded by human doings, right? Um, and the being aspect yeah. is so, so important. Um, myself, personally, getting back, back to your, your, your specific question, um, I it, – it's quite interesting because – what I do is is the form of being for Carl, so to speak. Um, it's it really it really energizes me, um, and it's it's li- aligned with my higher values. Um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be doing or being in that time space um, doing anything else. I, it absolutely energizes me, and I, I absolutely love it. The being aspect I think is so important to have the experience as you mentioned earlier right the energy right you cannot give what you don't have and that goes right across the board and for me the the being is just really coming back to my foundations really getting clear on why I do what I do getting quiet I always say you know the uh the music is the space between the notes right yeah. Um, and that, that allows us to really 
live intuitively, tap into our into our intuition, uh, be guided by that space, and that that's that's the being of uh, of Carl really listening to that space. Um, you yeah. know, I think I, I've been quite blessed with. Um, I, I I know how to say no. Um, I'm very mindful um, of my commitments. You know, um, I'm very mindful if it's not a hell yeah, it's, it's a hell no. Um, you know, it, it really has to align. And, and that's come through experience, of course, but also just it, it, I found it quite naturally for myself as well. So creating time to be, to, to, to absorb, to be present, to, to quieten down. Health for me is, is, has and always been a, a, a key value of mine. Um, I always say, and you know, one word of advice is our health is our biggest wealth, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. it's our foundation to this physical experience of us being. <laughs> and we talk about being, it's very hard to be if we don't have our health. Yeah. Right. With yeah, distractions, beautiful. we become doing and human doing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 I absorb, you know, I don't try and squeeze life. I, I absorb life. Um, I, I get quiet. I'm non-negotiable with my times to to recharge and, and replenish and, and realign and clarify and, and, you know, always reflect, which allows the, the, the doing, so to speak, to, to merge. But as I mentioned, I, 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 when you're present in that space-time, your being, right, if that makes mm-hmm. sense, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. I am extremely grateful that, you know, I get to work with some brilliant clients right across the globe and do something I, I, I really, really, really love and, and, and energizes me, you know? So it's, um, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and the being is, I, I, I kind of asked myself a question a, a long time ago in terms of, you know, when we look at time, right, you know, the, if we look at health statistics and the, and the average age, male, female, man, woman, on average, we're given around 4,000 weeks, right? Yeah. 4,000 weeks to invest in, in this journey. And yeah. you often hear, you know, that the, you can spend 80% in doing something you don't enjoy for a two-day breather at the end, which we call a weekend, you know, um, and, and then you and then you kind of roll back into it. Um, the, the 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 following sort of week, so to speak. And I, I ask myself the question in terms of, well, wow, that, that that's not a long time, no. right? No. Um, and I was like, well, obviously we we're here to have a physical doing experience, but how do I merge that into the being of that experience? And mm. one one you know, when I'm working with clients holistically across the board, you know, their perceptions and their lifestyle environments. Uh, we work a lot on bringing the doing into being and how does that energize them and aligning yeah. with something that makes them come alive. Mate, it's a, such a great answer and such a great subject to talk about. Um, 4,000 weeks is incredibly a short space of time when it's said 4,000 weeks rather than 70 to 80 years. And mm. I recently read that book, 4,000 mm. Weeks. Um, I can't remember the author now, but we, we might throw yeah, that in the show notes sure. because it actually really does need to wake people up. And the reason why I ask everyone that question is to get the answer like you've just given. And the answer, the, there's a couple of things that you said in there which I absolutely love is the music is the stuff between the notes and 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 learning how to be present is learning how to be a being and from that place we then we then can find our true selves the one that wasn't developed out of culture one wasn't developed out of uh, where we grew up and all that stuff the real being the real essence of the person and um, I'm I've, I've been working on this theory and I, I bounce it around by everybody I can. So I was going to ask you your top five values, but you gave off one of them. And I, I think it's a good time, before we get into the other stuff, a good time here to ask you about your values. But before I do, I wanted, and I, I wasn't going to do this, but I, I have been doing this of late. I have this theory that we all have an innate value. It's not one that we necessarily want or don't want. It's just one that we have. It's one that has either come through our, our growing up, our traumas, or it's come through the love or the, or the joy of life or whatever it has has been. And there's been a lot of work done by a lot of great psychologists and, um, and, and many, many more uh, philosophers and so on regarding values. Um, and I personally don't disagree with them. 
However, I think there's a point that's been missed is this innate value, which is our foundational pillar. And we build our values off that. We can design our life and a lot of people do design their life and talking to Robbo, both, you know, our friend, he's a, he's a, well, and you, you're the same. You design your life by your values. You design what you want, the outcome. However, um, getting back to this one value, uh, there's an innate value. And I found mine recently by, I was going for a walk and listening to too many books, listening to too many podcasts. I just went, oh, too much shit Brilliant. going in. Mm-hmm. Uh, took it all out and then for the next hour I walked, I talked to myself, I cried, I listened to nature and all of a sudden I found what my innate value was and went, that is why I react, respond and build. That is the very reason why I do. So that was my number one core foundational value. So saying it like that, what's yours? So when you look at it, when you boil it right down, as I kind of mentioned before, you know, over times I've, I've questioned and, and, and implemented and had insights and around connection and, you know, relationships and, and all of these kind mm-hmm. of things. But it all would always boil down for me to this point in time um, of health because yeah. that represents so much more to me than my physical experience. Right, yeah. it creates my reality. Um, it's my vehicle. Um, the through my own experience and, and and witnessing coaching people for twenty plus years and and, and that health and well being and performance space, the the stronger your foundations, the higher your vibration. Right, the the the, mm. the more vibration you can house and home and, and and leverage. And to me, that filters into every area of my life my connections, mm. my relationships, um, you know, family, clients, et cetera, right across the board. It just, it just rolls into it. And I said previously, we cannot give what we don't have. Yeah. Um, you know, and you mentioned energy, right? You know, when, when we're connecting what we are, you know, you and I now are sharing energy, aren't we? Right, we're, right. we're through through thought, form, and words and language, you know. Mm. But it's it's that that energetic connection, and and you know we all know, right? Life can be life can seem a lot more challenging when we're when we're running on empty, right? Yeah. And so yeah, to me it, it always refers back to just that foundation first and foremost, which mm. heightens and clarifies and enhances every experience there is. Yeah. So it's, it's quite obvious. And the question that I asked you, the reason why I asked you the question, because I knew you'd know the answer uh, to that. And I, it's obvious. And I just want that to be an example to everyone who's actually watching or listening to this podcast that when you are that um, single-minded on this is what your uh, foundational uh, value is or your foundational pillar is everything is and you said that everything your connection so all the other values that you have or anything else that you have in your life it all flows from this pillar of health and so mine is freedom so everything and I would always rebel against anything that's trying to control me but recently learned that freedom is through discipline not against it and so um, so everything that I go for is all about freedom, you know, financial freedom, uh, freedom with time, freedom with life, freedom with people, freedom with health, freedom with all these these things that I'm doing. And all my core values are, you know, freedom with inspiration. That's why we're doing this podcast. So I wanted to point out that you, you said, and you've said it that two or three times now, that you can't give what you don't have. Everything that you get will come from your number one core value. And if you weave that through all your other ones, then you've got so much more to give. And so, Carl, thank you so much, mate. Um, I knew you'd answer exactly probably yeah. how you would because I know that health is your number one core value uh, already before we even jumped on because of what you do. But it's very you, you must live a very fulfilled life living from that place all the time. Oh, hey, as we know, the, the, the quickest way to resentment and frustration is to subordinate your values, isn't it? You know, and Absolutely. Yeah, so when we align, you know, routinely, consistently and, and you know, take action towards that, as, as you're aware, it is, it's a fulfilling experience and, and that has a big mm. impact on our health and, and our well-being overall and it's so important. And I, like, I love that, that freedom aspect that you mentioned because, you know, when, as I mentioned to you, health represents so much to me and, 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 and freedom is that 
you know, like I said, it's yeah. it's the ability to get out there and live that life, um, you know, yeah. across that space, physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, um, and have that freedom mm-hmm. to do that. So, no, I love, I love that. Excellent. Yeah, awesome. So, I'm just going to bounce into a couple of things now. I've got a bunch of questions I want to ask you specifically around the health space, and obviously, you know, I wanted to build a platform of you because we've connected, and and I really like you <laughs> and everything you're about, and I want all of our listeners to get as much as they can and much value as they can today, because there probably is going to have to be a part two and part three as we go on in the future over the next several years um, of building these platforms of building healthy life patterns, which. I know building a healthy life pattern is not just about the food you put in your mouth. It's so much more than that, but we're going to get into that. So if you could just explain for us what a functional medical practitioner is, the difference between a functional medical practitioner, a nutritionist, a dietitian, uh, a general practitioner or doctor, um, uh, you know, ETC, if you could just give everyone a snapshot of, of what a functional medical practitioner is, and then we can get straight into into a couple of these other sure. questions. So to boil it down, when we look at it across that aspect, uh, and just 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 to clarify, I bring a I integrate a couple of different modalities right across the board. But when we're looking purely specifically at the functional medicine aspect, um, and that aspect, it's, it's it's more around really looking to work with who's in front of you, understand the being, right. And I, I really like to, when I'm presented with, and I have a number of different clients come to me for different reasons. A lot of them are suffering with long-term chronic um, symptoms and, 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 and disease or, or, or illnesses that they haven't had a lot of luck with in the, in the allopathic medical model. Um, I get clients that really want to just optimize and, and go, hey, like, you know, I really want to do everything I can and, and really fulfill my potential so yeah. but in, in all those cases particularly if it's someone that's got an imbalance i'm really looking to understand them first and foremost i want to understand what kind of person is experiencing certain symptoms um, versus yep i'm aware of the symptoms or the potential diagnoses that they may have received and i'm, I'm, I'm noted on that but i want to know the, the, the kind of person that's experiencing that first and foremost so it's kind of like a lifestyle, individualized, personalized approach to clearing someone's path to optimal health and well-being. And the key foundation of it is really addressing the underlying cause, not massaging yeah. symptoms, okay, but really getting to the cause or the causes of what's manifesting on the physical level. I always yeah. say the internal is a manifest. The, sorry, the external is a manifestation of the internal. Right. And when we look at from our physical foundations, first and foremost, everything is connected and we have systems and processes that just like us on the mental, emotional, energetic level, when we're congruent and aligned with values and, and we're living accordingly, we have a different experience, um, yeah. often termed fulfillment. Um, same with our physical foundations. When they're aligned and congruent and communicating and clear, we have this phenomenal experience called health and well-being, called energy, mm-hmm. right? Called mental clarity, um, calmness, clarity, you know, all of these kind of mm-hmm. things that, that align. So as a functional medicine practitioner, I'm really focusing on the individual first and foremost, understanding them, how do they perceive their environment, what does their environment look like, how are they responding to their environment, and really understanding and getting a good snapshot, sometimes through integrative deeper testing, whether that's comprehensive gut microbiome screening, blood work, hormones, urine, um, a a host of different aspects depending on what I'm working with, Um, and, and really understanding what's happening there and looking at it as a functional pathway and being trained as as a functional medicine practitioner, looking at functional integrative patterns that you start to see or or are imbalanced across the board from that physical level. So I'm really looking to address that underlying cause. And when you address the underlying cause and create alignment, this phenomenal body, mind, okay, spirit knows what to do. Right. Yeah. And it's also educating and empowering the individual to understand how they work. 
or how yeah. they desire to work, right? Yeah, yeah. That's been that's been the big one for me. That one hmm. because um, you know, so understand. We're not we 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 tend to you know whether it's you know we 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 don't really read the user manuals, do we? Right, we tend no. to just oh, we'll work it out as we go. You know, yeah. oh, it looks pretty yeah. straightforward. I'll put that there and that there, and you know, and away we go. Right. What's the easiest? Yeah. Right. But I always say, if, you, yeah. if we're going to read one user manual in our life, you know, read read yours. Right. Read yeah, read, read your own and understand how you yeah. work. Yeah. And that's so that's important. So um, and and so a big part of what I do is the, the empowerment as well. Because we do yeah. live in a space. So, you know, a lot of people come that, you know, through whatever reason, journeys to date, yeah. um, previous experience, advice they've been given, you know, whatever it might be, they, they're, they're disempowered. And and when we look at the conditioning as, as you know, as a dad of, of, of two young, beautiful kids, right? Like, and, and you'll be well aware of it as well. There's a lot of conditioning out there. Mm. There's a lot of disempowerment yeah. when it comes to health through play and mm-hmm. You know, when you look at it and can read between the lines, it's no wonder that we feel that we don't have a lot of control and we must take, you know, a, a, a drug or a medication to make us feel better, right? You know, yeah. there, there's, there's, because that's what we have been exposed to, right? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and on that uh, note, it, before we move forward, yeah. don't get me wrong, allopathic medicine for emergency situations Absolutely phenomenal, right? Okay, brilliant. Yeah. That's what it's designed for, right? If you have an accident or there's an emergency for whatever reason, 100%, right? It, it, it's, it's brilliant and you credit where it's due. But the, the system isn't designed to optimize the individual. Yeah, it, totally. And and that's one of the messages that I really wanted you to, to sing very loudly today. Um and it's been, it's probably been a, a good four year journey for me to get really get um, build my my pattern of life that's all about optimal health as much as I have. hasn't been a small process, but I really wanted you to to sing that message or preach that message loud because um, there is more than one way to skin a cat, and the, and for the longevity, it's going after the health in in a in a right way and understanding. And there's so much data out there today, and there's so much scientific um, proof out there today. But then the general public, how do they actually know? So, having someone like who's a functional medical practitioner that understands the human being. Uh, rather than okay, well, here's one size fits all. Here's a packet of Panadol that 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 suits you know um, a headache right now, um, but it's not a an old, it's not a treatment forever. Um, it's and and wanting to spend the time getting to know the person, um, and like Peter Crone said, and this is a important because Peter Crone says, and this is what you're anchoring or you're talking about before. Disease in the mind causes disease in the body, and I I firmly believe that. So understanding. These are symptoms that we're having, disease in the body, but where's it coming from? A lot of the time it comes from dis-ease in the mind. Um, and I just want to share a quick story about that because we will be talking about that. Before I ask you how you went down this path, that was going to be another mm. thing that I was going to ask you. But I just want to share this story that's recently come up for me. I had a, a conversation with my older brother recently and my father died when he was 65. He had a, uh, a massive brain tumour. Um, he was operated on by Charlie Teo, and I'm I'm a Charlie Teo fan. And right now, in, in Australia, everyone's bagging that guy, but he was he's a phenomenal uh, neurosurgeon, a Keol neurosurgeon, and uh, and I love his work. He's functional as well. And uh, he will he he said to us that Dad would have nine months. Uh, don't worry about the radiotherapy. Don't worry about all this stuff. And we had faith, and I oh, know we're going after that, but he had exactly nine months. Um, and his brain tumor was radical, and I think it was blastoma glastoma, okay. which is a very fast growing brain tumor. And my, fa- my the reason I'm saying the story is my brother was saying to me because we have a faith and he, we believe in, in there's a God and all this sort of stuff. And he said, Why did God take David? Why did God take that? And I went, Well, he didn't. He didn't. You know, I said, Dad killed himself. And he goes, What do you mean? And I went, Well, um, he was a he was an extremely critical thinker, my father, and a lot of people at his funeral said he lived a hundred years and sixty five, and um, 
And I, I, the minute I heard that, I went, oh, yeah, good on you, Dad, fantastic. But I don't want to live 100 years and 65. In fact, if I can live 40 in 100, that means I'm probably doing better, more healthy. I'm more here for more people, you know. I'm, and and my dad was an incredible thinker and had a lot of stress. So, therefore, disease in his mind caused him a disease in his mind, his brain. And that's what I, I believe, absolutely 100%. You can't convince me it would, wouldn't happen. Well, actually, sorry, I do have malleable beliefs, yeah. so you could probably <laughs> if you show me some science. No, but, but, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that story off the back of what you were saying about what functional medical practitioners do. They, 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 they would work with a person and understand what they're going through before – um, so prescribing medicine and prescribing one hundred percent because, like I said, the the personalised manifestation of that can be so different and unique, you know. But it just might manifest on the physical level as a categorised name condition, so to speak. And it's so yep. important, right, when you're personalising aspects that you really understand that, that individual. And as you mentioned, you know, uh, yeah, disease in, in mind can manifest in disease in body, but also yeah. it's a two-way street, right? The there vagus nerve, it's, 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 it's got two pathways, right? And that's the mm. most, if we're ever going to train a nerve, you know, and encourage people, research the vagus nerve, understand it, Um well, you're, you're jumping ahead because that is one of my really big ticket items on this podcast. Sure. I, I, I won't <laughs> so, go too much, but just because just you brought that up, right? Yeah, just so everyone is, is aware, 100%. That's a two-way street, disease in, in mind, disease in body, disease in body, disease in mind. And and it can it's a top-down, bottom-up driver, and it's, and, it's, and it's so finely interlinked. It's almost like the chicken in the air. So, let's go there with the vagus nerve right now then because that was one of my – I wanted to ask you what, what is the purpose of the vagus nerve and how do we strengthen it? And and you just started on that, so let's go there. Well, the tilt. vagus nerve is, you know, it's this very fascinating basic – basically highway if, if, we, if we boil it down which connects our brain to our gut and a lot of junctions in between so think of it as a highway and you can branch out and, and, and come off the highway down the legs and limbs and organs and um, right through the, the body but there's this main highway that we kind of come on to to feed transport connect it's how your body basically communicates to itself so so much feedback is coming through this this highway and it goes up and it goes down and the gut talks to the brain and the brain talks to the gut and in the functional medicine integrative medicine world your gut is termed your second brain some mm. even say it's it's the first brain for a number of different reasons one particularly being more mindful if we want to look at joy and fulfillment of our, of our experience, of our reality. There's, there's this key player called, um, I mean, serotonin, okay? And, and it's, it's a, I'm sure a lot of people have heard it before. If you haven't, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a neurotransmitter that helps us feel better, feel, feel good, okay? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a nice feeling. It, it kind of precurses into a whole lot of different aspects, but I won't bore you with the chemistry. But remember the name serotonin. Now, 85% of serotonin is made in your gut, 85 wow. to 90, some research team is starting to show us. Now, that, that, oh, that's, wow. a, that's a, a lot of percentage. Mm. And that feeds mm. back up and communicates to, to the brain and, and turns on and off different receptor sites and, and, and the, the functionality of the brain, et cetera. So the vagus nerve, it basically balances our nervous system. And particularly in today's world, something I see personally is a lot of sympathetic overdrive so basically that means that you're in one part of your nervous system the doing aspect okay um 23 and a half hours a day almost right yeah. and we're yeah. not getting that yeah. balance and when if we look at nature right you know here we are in summer here in in in, in beautiful australia um there's a reason why summer lasts for a period of time and then we shift into a different season autumn into winter and then spring and then summer. We, we can't just stay in summer 24 seven, right? We, we would become right. very limited in our, in our environment. And it's same with our health and our wellbeing. If we, if we're just locked into one side of that nervous system, right? You right. talk about people, you know, cramming 60 years, or sorry, a hundred years into, into 
a biological 65 year space you know um when your body when you when your when your body's in that sympathetic nervous system it's almost like living 48 to 72 hours in a 24 hour period and we can't sustain that right that's like a tree a tree without roots it's unsustainable right eventually it's going to catch up so the vagus nerve really helps us go back and forth between those states it builds our, mm. our resiliency, our balance. And the more tone we have in that vagus nerve, the more effective we are at doing that. We might experience a, a, a sympathetic space and then we can come back to that rest and digest. And that's why we have day and night. You know, day, we're naturally more sympathetic. Here we are, light, up, open, awake. You know, we're in that generally in that more grounded sympathetic space and as we yeah. you know move into our evening and the, the sun starts to fade and we we go into more dark and we get different neurotransmitters we, we flip into that that parasympathetic space right and, yeah. and we jump in and out of them throughout our day as well but you know the vagus nerve governs that it really okay. it really dictates our ability to be able to do that there's even right. research now around you know health span and lifespan those with greater vagal tone have a greater health span, a greater lifespan. Wow. Right? Wow. Um, we know through looking at the gut and the microbiome and, and, and gut health, those with more um, overall diversity in their microbiome, in their gut, and less inflammation, um, and a good gut lining that's working for them, have greater vagal tone. The more mm-hmm. inflammation we have in our gut, the less vagal tone we have. So it makes these processes so much harder. So much challenging, mm. you know, and, and one thing I do notice a lot, and particularly when we're trying to prime our mindset, right, and and direct our attention and energy to a space that's more aligned, it can be challenging if you're making 5 to 10% of serotonin. Yeah. Right? And, you're, and you're missing 80 to 85% of it. Like, it could be challenging. Mm. And it's not about, oh, well, you know, just, just be grateful. You know, do a gratitude journal. Right. I get clients come to me and go, man, I've been doing a gratitude journal for 30 years and I have moments, but I don't know, is there something, am I missing something? I just can't connect. Mm. Yeah. And we, yeah. And we, we run deeper and I'm like, yeah, understandable, right? Like it's kind of like putting $3 gas in your car and trying to drive to Sydney. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. the, the thought and the intentions there and, and love it, give it a go, but you're probably going to find you're going mm. to pull up short. Right. Yeah. Such a good, such a good analogy that one about the gratitude journal. Um, we'll get more into and that. It's so, amazing, yeah, you know, when you going. bring vagal tone. So I mean, I do a lot of vagal exercises and, and work a lot right through. You know, vagal vagus nerve can be toned through nutrition and certain foods. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you to give us give us some because I, you know it was one of the questions I had on purpose because yeah of what we've spoken about with the vagus nerve and my very limited understanding like you said if I'm going to read if I'm going to read a book about my health read my own user manual and uh, understanding that we I did need to do some work on my vagus nerve um, I'd love for you to give some tips to everyone about what how do where do we where do they start with that stuff what's the best couple of processes a there? great way to just gently start you know an easier way into to vagal tone is um is something like even like gargling okay just yeah. a, a nice subtle gentle gargle for hey i mean gargling is always an interesting one it gives you feedback so if you have been you know going 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 doing 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 you're probably going to find you won't be able to gargle for as long but over time as you mm-hmm. build that tone and you you're you know you you consistent with that space you'll find that you can gargle for a lot longer but i always start clients off with a little bit of gargling get some mm-hmm. feedback hey how was it oh you know it was oh actually it was really challenging i could gargle for 10 seconds and i had to just stop and have a breather and almost you know almost thought that i was going to um pass out you know and and, and or it might be hey you know it flowed really well for 25 seconds in it kind of really became quite hard or and over time mm-hmm. you know i i try to push them out to 60 90 seconds um as a as, as an introduction it's a nice way just that vibration is great um singing yeah. singing is another fantastic uh, 
before you go there, I'm sure, or we live on the waterfront of Burley, and I'm sure my neighbours thought that I was absolutely <laughs> nuts because every morning I'm out there standing in the sun and no shirt on Good and man. gargling, trying to gargle for 90 minutes. And by the time I'm finished, I'm splattering water everywhere. But right. yeah. It, I, I, it, hope it, I hope it was 90 seconds, not 90 minutes. Um. Oh, sorry. I said 90 minutes. Yeah, no. What? But, 90 but the, minutes. The, yeah. yeah. No, I've got good, a very sorry. strong no, day, isn't it? <laughs> That's a record. <laughs> no, 90, se- 90 seconds, and it wasn't all smooth and rhythmic, oh, mind you, I say yes. that. And, and, and good man, and it was something that we set for you to begin with as well, right? Um, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, so singing, and then were... it can move into, you know, singing. Singing's in another great way. Um, wow. The, so there you go. I can yeah, sing. Cold water exposure, right? Okay, cold uh, water exposure mm. is a great exercise for toning vagal nerve. Um, sucking on ice cubes. Okay, oh, so wow. you just get an ice okay. cube and, and yeah. suck on that until it melts. That's a great way to 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 train your vagus nerve. Um, exercise, yeah. all right. Mm. Uh, mm. Exercise is a, is, a, is a good form. Now, when you look at the research, overall, you're going to get benefits through movement. Okay, um, but yeah. they start to kind of vary. Now, I, my advice is, hey, what? do whatever works for you, whatever resonates, but if we're really going to dial it down, yeah. uh, particularly more kind of the resistance stress, uh, strength-based work, um, shows some really good reflections in terms of really enhancing vagal tone. Um, wow. So that, that's a good way to start. Breath work, okay? So, so different, work, okay. different aspects of breathing and things, and particularly nasal breathing, really helps mm-hmm. with, um, with with optimizing the vagal tone. Um why nasal breathing? Uh, nasal breathing from a perspective of just the the, the primitive biological adaptation of, of breathing patterns. Okay, the mouth breathing tends to upregulate more of the adrenal response. Okay, um, and yeah. they're finding research today when, when we kind of look at it from that perspective. It's more the, um, the, the the message and the groundedness of the breath state that allows the parasympathetic nervous system to become stronger um, at this okay. point in time. The oh. the mouth breathing part is more from that secondary respiratory aspect, right? Um, that survival mechanism. We're not kind of necessarily in a perfect world designed to um, breathe through our mouth for, for for long periods of time, so to speak. So hence, when you're like stressed after you've done a workout, you can't actually really get to the point of breathing through your nose. You're just trying to survive. Hundred yeah, percent, <laughs> right? Like if if you you know. If you just ran a 100-meter race or something like that, right, your, your brain's probably going to say, hey, we'll get to nasal shortly, but can you just open your mouth for a couple of minutes? Um, mm-hmm. And then we'll reground ourselves, and, and then we'll get back into yeah. that state. But that's fine. You know, that's that's the stress response. You know, or, yeah. hey, in, in, in the evolutionary primitive days where, hey, you were walking along the savannah and a, a lion popped out, you'd probably scout the tree pretty quickly, right? And and you wouldn't be worrying about your your, your box breathing through your nose, right? You'd be up <laughs> no. there and then you'd, then you'd ground yourself <laughs> and go, oh, right, let's bring this breathing back, yeah. right? But you probably would have yeah. opened your mouth a fair bit either to scream or breathe, right? Um, <laughs> or both, both at the same so time. It's, it's, yeah, it's looking at that aspect, right? Um, yeah. And then we can even touch on, you know, like prebiotic foods, probiotic foods mm. so powerful they're powerful for, for toning the vagal nerve through our our okay. microbiome right yeah and, and i don't want to give away all your questions so i don't want to go too far ahead just in case i'm well yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, well you you are but that's okay because <laughs> we'll circle back to that one but yeah um yeah so, so when we start to look at you know real nutrient dense whole foods okay um and particularly you know that live cultured prebiotic sauerkraut kimchi kombucha kefir um along those lines they're powerful foods and they actually help tone our vagus nerve and and, and bring that benefit um fascinating research um when you look at say uh, i can start for a couple of professional sport teams and i do a lot of their concussion protocols and purely from a gut health perspective and and making sure that we can particularly athletes suffering like long-term concussions and con- post-concussion syndrome. And we look at the gut, yeah, and it's inflamed. You heal and seal the gut. You get their mm-hmm. vitamin D levels where they should be. I mean, even a diverse microbiome and optimal vitamin D levels is, is strengthens the vagus nerve, which protects your, your brain, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's phenomenal, right, um, from that perspective. It's all connected, and it's all kind of linking in that bigger perspective. Yeah. So, so, like, for 
for me to like, I just want to explain, or well, not explain, but just ask this: is what you were saying about the vagus nerve is a two-way highway, and you've been giving us some really, really good tips. And I think all of those tips will be listed in our show notes for people just to start something. You know, just start gargling or start singing or cold water uh, exposure is one of my favourites. I do it every day at. P3 and there we are shouting out P3 <laughs> recovery again, uh, my friends down there and um, and it won't be long before you'll have a P3 recovery up on oh, the Sunshine well, Coast. Well, They're I, about to I've franchise heard, out. I've, I've seen you guys post them bits and pieces and um, oh, yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it looks good. In the sauna and the and the cold and the ice bath every day, and a lot of those things that you were saying, exercise and stuff, are slowly building a healthy life pattern around those things. But you were saying you were also saying sorry, not the butt. You're also saying it's a two way street. So therefore. If my understanding in reading my user manual is if my gut is off, then it can cause me stress to my brain. So sometimes it's not an external thing that's causing me stress or pressure or anything. Sometimes my my physical body, my gut can be off and my my vagus nerves weak and it sends messages that cause me stress to my mind. Is that what you're saying, Carl? It's a two, yeah. two Okay, two so way, sometimes yeah. we'll look for it and go, oh, well, work's stressing me out, but maybe you're unhealthy, you've got an unhealthy gut that's causing you stress. 100%, and then you've got low vagal tone, which which decreases your ability to deal with stress. Yeah, you know? there you go. Wow. So it causes your ability not to, to not deal with stress 100%. well. Right, and, and- So that is yeah, more than- I mean, Robbo and I have had good chats about this, and this is one of the reasons why Robbo was really, you know, I- keen to bring it into some of the work that he does and and, and you know his, his coaching programs and things because he's he understands the you know if you're trying to optimize a human being and build resiliency you know and there's some there's great ways to do that but if you're not addressing the gut you are leaving a pretty mm-hmm. key stone unturned mm. So, so look, it, it's just it just goes to show that very, at the very beginning of health is understanding, like you said, understand your user manual, your user manual, and it, it can sometimes we all think maybe start in our mind, but a lot of time it can just start in our gut, and we need to actually get that understanding first, and that is that is a very reason why um, everyone I signed up to Carl is to get that understanding and start working towards building a healthy life pattern. Um, I'm I, I want to ask you how did you go down this path of functional medical practitioner? What sent you down this path? And um, before we go further into the nutrition and all that sort of stuff, what what got you started on this journey? Even though mm. that we know that health was mm. your number one pillar, um, you don't you don't just go wake up one day and go, oh, I'm going to be a functional medical practitioner. Yeah, no, I, I certainly didn't. Um, <laughs> uh, <it> was, <laughs> I'm a curious person. Um, I, I, I love yeah. I love a why. I love a good why. Okay. Um, I just keep asking. You know, I always say the quality of your life is directly proportionate to the quality of the questions you ask, right? And, and yeah, your exactly. life and your reality. And and I, it's health. Well, well, not not necessarily that. I mean, the health phase. I remember as as I must have been five or six at the time, and it was my first experience of a hospital. And I went there with my mum. This is in New Zealand. I grew up in New Zealand, and one of my mum's elderly friends was in hospital. And I you know, hopped into the car, mum. I was like, oh, we're going to see a friend. You know, she's in hospital. Hospital, okay. Never been there before. Where we go. I remember walking into this hospital as, as a five-year-old or six-year-old. And, you know, went down the wards and I was kind of like, well, oh, this is a pretty cold, eerie kind of kind of space. And this just this, this doesn't feel that lively. Um, feels a bit heavy. Um, and looking into the rooms and seeing people like in beds and hooked up to machines. And, and I remember just, you know, there's there no color in them. They were, they were gray and, you know, it was, it was quite a heavy experience. And I remember just like walking out of there and, and just going, wow, like, whew, that, that was, you know, looking forward to getting back home and getting outside and running around in the sun and kicking the ball around mm. kind of thing. That's, and that's a no, five, that was about five, five or six. six. Just having this, just this memory. Like, wow, that, that that's not a place I want to spend too much time in if I don't need to. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I just yeah, and and that that just kind of sat with me. And then um, I grew up playing a, a bit of rugby union, and and I had some great coaches during that time. And 
and, and when we got to a certain level and, and, and a representative level for that, we, it started to get a little bit serious, right? So we had sports psychologists come in, and this was at 15, 16, and sports nutritionists. And, you know, and, I, and I was just sitting there like, listening to these lecturers, and if you want to feel and perform better and, you know, like there's, there's certain, you know, things you, you, you want to do and prime yourself with and exercises and food and things like that. And through my own experience, I, I implemented them, and I'm like, yeah, this 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 stuff works. I feel feel quite good. Um, this, this is this is working, and I just observed. And you know, it's not not a one size fits all approach. Of course, it's it's everyone's different, and yeah. everyone had their little tweaks and bits and pieces and and fine tuned. But that kind of triggered a bit of a uh, a seed for me to go, yeah, hey, well, health and performance and well being and these actions you can take and. If you take action, and you know, if you have a desire to to optimize yourself, there's 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 a there's a there's a space out there for it, and that just kind of led me to different questions, and then it kind of sat with me. And as I went through my schooling, it was still there, and when I you know just reflect on what you know moving forward, what do I want to do, and so that just kind of stayed with me. And long story short. It started off with a, uh, a Bachelor of Sport and Exercise Science in Sports Medicine um, and majored in, in um, Sports Psychology and Sports Nutrition. And, and, but I, had, I came out of that and I had so many questions. And I, wow. I started to apply it and I wasn't seeing the results I was, I was led to believe I'd, I would see. Um, so that mm-hmm. just led me to asking more questions and digging deeper and, and studying different areas and, and led me into um, well, evolutionary biology and, and um, holistic nutrition and evolutionary biology and nutrition. And that, that led me down to functional medicine. So I kept asking questions to go, right, well, I, I feel, you know, I, I've, I'm understanding that space, but there's, there's so much more to it. Now, what about this space, you know, and, and, and how yeah. do I learn more about that? And how do I, where do, where do I go to study more about that and then learn more about that? Cause that's a pretty key piece. And just, I always had this vision of just optimizing the individual is like pieces of a, of a, you know, of a circle. There's so many different pieces that come together. Um, and then I just kind of one thing led to another, to another. So once I finished an area, I had another question and go, okay, but how does that integrate with that? So when I mentioned yeah. taking an integrative approach, um, you know, I apply it integratively across the board to, to optimize the individual. And that led to, um, I was over in the UK, uh, living in London for, for nine, eight, eight years, eight and a half years. And that's where I, started to really get in and, and, and that's where I completed my, my functional medicine um, study and, and um, in qualification there. And yeah, when I was researching it, it just really answered a lot of questions for me. It, it, it aligned and just was like a, 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 a you know, a, a well-worn glove that just fitted to go, Hey, that's the questions I've been asking. And that's the kind of approach I've been wanting to take. And that, you know, I can being qualified in that space allows me to utilize that that space to to mm-hmm. advance and optimize and yeah so it just kind of led way down, right down there and then in between obviously as you're well aware you know um, human beings you know we're, we're a unique brilliant bunch um, and but we can we can complicate things too um, and understanding yeah. the human being right at the end of the day I had to be aware of um, you know I I'm working with human beings. All right, and everyone's yeah. different, and everyone mm. you know is, is unique in their brilliant way and shape and form, All right? And and that's mm. fantastic, and and understanding human behavior. So there's a big human behavioral element to to you know coaching, as you're well aware, yeah. and, and and optimizing someone's health and well being, being and rebalancing that health as well. So mm. in a long roundabout way, through 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 the questions I keep asking myself. <laughs> Yeah, but, but also through the impression you saw right back at five or six is uh, if that's what medicine 100%. is, then that's making people unhappy and yeah, grey. Yeah, it uh, doesn't feel like a good environment. Hundred percent right, and you know, like I said, it was it just didn't make a lot of sense to me, no. right? In terms of a, yeah. of a wellness approach. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal journey, and. and and I always advise, you know, be a student of life and it's still going, right? Like, and it will, it will never yeah. stop. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 hey, I'm, you know, like every week I'm loving learning something new and it keeps me energized and, and, and progressing and, and stimulated in a good way to, you know, um, keep growing myself and, and being of value to my clients. 
Yeah, and in in the words of a very wise friend of mine, uh, the malleability of our beliefs, you know, understanding that we don't have it uh, nailed mm. down, and like, and that's what I love about this this journey. That uh, and look, I'm very very grateful that you decided to go on that path of uh, functional medical practicing. And, um, and what has helped me understand in the, the couple of times we've spent together and the journey that I've been on. And so I'm very grateful. But And, and like I would endorse anyone who's that curious and their health is their number one priority and you're, you're uh, five, six or 15 or 20 and you want to go on a journey of helping people, there could be probably uh, uh, an awesome career in front of you uh, being curious about the human body. And, and I love what you said about um, – because I think – from my perspective, and this is a very uneducated, uh, not limited, but uneducated point of view, is that I think um, normal medicine is like a one one size fits all. And um, what I, I like about what you do is is not just understanding the medical side of me, but understanding the being side of me. What you know, quite often I get asked this question, and. And it's all well intentioned, and I and I appreciate it. As is, uh, how's Nath? And I like, I'm, I'm because I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm I'm good always, and when I'm not, I make sure that I go and find some solitude and, and deal with those things. And I'm a I'm a um, probably a curious study of the human human condition, and first starts with me. And and then so on the traumas that we that we go through and and what my fa- favorite quote is uh, the secret uh, the um, the freedom you most seek is in the darkest part of the cave you must fear to go by Joseph Brilliant. Campbell yeah. and, and and so like for me it's like that's my that's my my little bent there um, but when I get asked that question um, it's almost like I don't ask me that question because you're going to yeah. make me think and and understanding that that's my being is like that's when when you and I touch base is there's a few times we have it's like the like I was saying the energy I get from that but you seem to want to know more about my being than about my health and that tells you tells you so it's a it's a very rewarding and uh, wonderful career you're on so this question building healthy life patterns from your point of view where do we start so generally when, when we're it also They've probably already answered yeah, a few yeah, times. I, I, I think, <laughs> and, and one, as you mentioned, right, like tuning into the being, it, it's really assessing where where the person's at, right? And and that's the art yeah. of it as well, isn't it? Right, like getting a good sense of where they are at currently. So, so I mean, it, it's extremely general because I mean, like when I'm working with an individual, I'm really honing in on where is this person at, right? Like because yeah. there's so many different places to start, to be honest. And, it, and, exactly. and the, the answer to your question is where your feet are. Right. Uh, that's so good. So, because I mean, I, I we could sit here for, for for a week and I can tell you potential strategies to begin, but the art yeah. is understanding where your feet are. Yeah. And yeah. what are your what are your biggest areas right now to create some space? Because remember, energy lives in space, mm-hmm. right? If there's no room for it, there'll be there'll be there'll be low life force, low energy. Yeah. So it probably wasn't the answer you <laughs> you you. But, but again, it's, it's it's so important, right? Like I could give yeah. you a whole lot of you know different areas. Don't get me wrong, but tuning into where your feet are and. And particularly in those bigger cases, if you create some downtime and listen to the space between the notes, yeah. right, the music, you will know. Yeah. Right, you, 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 and I'm not talking about from you know, test results and microbiomes. I'm not talking any of that. I'm talking about just you will know the biggest thing for you to address right now. It might be you need to change your environment. It might be a perception. It might be you need to rehydrate yourself first and foremost. It might be you need more light exposure. It might be you 
you need more sleep, right? Or it, may, it might need, you need less light exposure, right? Um, it might mean you need to remove yourself from something, right? Um, a host of different things. So I always, yeah. I'm tuning into where your feet are and then for the individual to empower themselves. As you mentioned earlier, right? How did you find your deep core foundational value? Mm. You, you got quiet. Got present. Right? Yeah. You got present. You, you, you brought yourself into alignment. You went, nature's powerful for doing that. Yeah. Right? Don't, you know, like when people are seeking clarity, they don't run into Martin Place, do they, in Sydney? <laughs> right, they, 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 they go bush. Right, they, they go to the beach yeah. and to the coast, and because mm. nature is powerful, right, it has yeah. a vibration that supports you to get clear, to quieten down, and yeah, I, I encourage people to you know we live in a world where, and hey, I, I love I love learning, I love researching, I love listening, I love talking, I love communicating, I love having good conversations, mm. love all of that, but. We've got to get quiet too, right? Absolutely. And, you know, there are times when, yeah, I'll switch off from everything. You know, mm. doesn't care how great the book is, the podcast, whatever it is, right? You, you got to switch off at times, right? Yeah. Just to have a, just to get that space. And you and you will, you will start to know. And yeah. then, you know, the definition of a, of a genius is the application of wisdom, right? So, and that's then exactly apply right. that wisdom. Yeah. Take, take, take apply action. It. Right. Yeah. Mm. No, knowledge only fills our brains. Yeah. Mm. Got to come you know, from we, here. We, we, we live happen. in a world where we're certainly not, um, we're not lacking knowledge. No. Right. We're, we're, drown, we're, we're actually so drowning much. in knowledge. Yeah, I agree you know? with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we can just like, just like a meal, right? You, you can, you can only eat so much in one sitting. Yeah. So I, I, I liken knowledge to um, everyone's looking for a saviour. Everyone's looking for a hero or a saviour in their world. Everyone's looking for that. So the the the, the uh, attraction to knowledge is, mm. well, this mm. is the latest thing, this is the latest thing, this is the latest, and, and, but we don't apply it to our life. You know, you, you just said about, you said before, this may be not be the answer you were looking for. I, I wasn't looking for any particular answer except for the one that you actually gave because that was that's perfect is is where your actually feet are. Sometimes we've got to unplug from all of the noise, from all of the information and from all of the knowledge that's coming our way. And we and I, I firmly believe this, Carl, with all my heart is we have the answers inside of us. We just have to stop listening to the bullshit. And, and like you said, where are your feet? You know, where are your feet right now? Like, and and this should be an encouragement to everyone listening. Like, if you want to start building a healthy life pattern, um, I endorse what Carl said. Just stop, stop right now. Where are your feet at? Like, where are you truly at? And then start there and uh, get quiet and get very quiet. Solitude is probably one of the most powerful tools mm. that I use um, for wisdom. And, and, and the difference between knowledge – and knowledge applied and wisdom applied is uh, is knowledge comes directly from our mind um, and sometimes that's not even our brain, it's mm. our mind. Um, so knowledge comes from our mind whereas wisdom comes directly from mm. our heart and we know what's mm. right and we know what's wrong and we operate out of that space. I, Thank you, mate. That was a fantastic I, I, answer. You feel it, right? You know, you, you, the Absolutely. more in tune you are, like I said, you know, tr- trust you your you don't feel you don't feel a knowledge though. Yeah. You feel that. hundred yeah, percent, right? Yeah. It's a feeling state. Right? You hear a lot of Trust people go, oh, geez, you know, like oh you know, oh, I had a feeling I should have done that, but you know, the the the, the, the logistics got in the way. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah tr- tr- <laughs> trust trust your gut. Yeah, trust your gut. Opt- opt- okay, optimize so your gut first and foremost. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, no, definitely yeah, optimize yeah, your gut. Yeah. Get that Vegas nerve exactly, pumping. Exactly, hundred percent. Nourish, optimize, and, and and trust your gut. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in. Yeah, there. Hmm. yeah. Um, I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah. So, mate, the the microbiome, um, and it's a bit of a buzz word at the moment with people like Tim Spector and Andrew Huberman and um, a few other people that. That, well, not just those guys, but there's a bunch of them actually talking about the microbiome as the second brain or the first brain, like you said, and what it's made up. Can you um, c- 
Could you actually just elaborate on the microbiome because your connection between the vagus nerve and the microbiome and the brain, the whole thing, how it all works, and I've got a limited understanding of the microbiome, um, but I am not a functional medical practitioner or a scientist in this area at all. And so I would love for you to elaborate for our, our listeners about the importance of having a healthy microbiome. So that's that's one. And then two, uh, again, like individually, where would you start with getting that healthy? So first and foremost, just to clear, the microbiome is, a, is, a, is an ecosystem of, of bacteria. And we are actually more bacteria than we are human being. Yeah. Right? And, and that's first and foremost something to really understand. Right? We are more bacteria than we are human being. We have more bacterial right. cells within our makeup than we do human cells. And right. the microbiome is that, is that makeup. It's that, it's that flora. And we, we have other microbiomes. We have an oral microbiome and we have a skin microbiome and a cut microbiome and, 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 and different aspects. But when we're really looking at that, think of it like the, the roots to a tree in that, that forest floor environment. And within this microbiome, it's, it's, it's an ecosystem of beneficial bacteria and potential pathogenic bacteria. Now, the potential meaning if they proliferate to greater numbers and start to, that microbiome gets outnumbered, outweighed. So we have more potential pathogenic than beneficial bacteria. That's when we start to see this imbalance, this incongruency, this disease within that microbiome space but coming back a a diverse healthy microbiome is where 80 to 90 percent of your immune system is oh wow and we've got this galt tissue or gut associated lymphoid tissue which really is a cornerstone to your immune function all right so again i'll say it again 80 to 90 percent of your immune system resides in your gut right Mm mm-hmm that's a lot that 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 that's yes. that's your immunity that's your one of your biggest gifts you will ever have in this physical experience it, it yeah. does a phenomenal job on a day-to-day basis of allowing you to have a a, a fantastic experience yeah. and it's the diversity of that that's so important the communication of that that's so important right that allows it to function optimally and <laughs> It's made up of, as I mentioned, a host of different family of bacteria that feed on certain proteins and things that we can, we can, and, and, and fatty acids that we can make internally and feed on predominantly what we choose to eat or bring into our body or okay. our lifestyle aspects as well okay. and there's a lot of different things that can downgrade that that microbiome i mean typically some of the the key ones being sugar <clears throat> alcohol refined vegetable oils and NSAIDs or non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and we must okay. throw stress in there as well because it has a big impact yeah okay but but those yeah. i mean yeah. just just to start with i mean i could go a lot deeper but just to start with those five takes they they, they, they play a lot in terms of the the yeah. The imbalance of that microbiome. I might just get you to repeat those for so, so when we start to look at it, so it's sugar. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Refined vegetable oil. Okay. Yeah. When we start to look at it from that bigger perspective, um, we've got alcohol, we've got stress, yes. and then we've got non steroid anti inflammatory drugs. Okay. So those right. are things like, you know, um, Panadol, ibuprofen, things like that. Kind of as you mentioned yeah. previously. Now those are those are, are pretty destructive to the gut lining, extremely right. dis- disruptive, and even more so if they're taken on an empty stomach. Okay, okay. Um, but it's just something to be mindful of for for our um, female lady listeners out there. Um, also, compel onto that the contraceptive pill. Okay, right. um, extremely disruptive to the microbiome. Okay, yeah. um, particularly if, it, if, yeah. if you've been on it for a long period of time. Okay, yeah. um, but why is the microbiome important? One, first and foremost, it's where your immune system resides, a good healthy yeah. 80 to 90% of yeah. it. Two, it, it's, it's, we aren't what we eat, 
but we are what we can digest and absorb. Okay. Right? That's good. So, you know, that's really important at the end of the day to your experience of energy. Doesn't yeah. matter if you put good food. I mean, I see a lot of clients that come to me that eat really well, but they haven't got the ability to digest it. Right? So that's that's the individual microbiome, 100%. isn't it? Like yeah. everyone's. So, this is, yeah. so that's why it's really important. A good balanced microbiome really facilitates that process. And it, yeah, and that's very individual, though, isn't sorry? it? Sorry, that's a very individual. The thing, microbiome though, isn't is it? almost like your fingerprint. But you, you're going right. to have a foundational, general pattern of beneficial and certain strains. But for example, right, even, even you and I, you're, you're there on the Gold Coast. I'm here on the Sunshine Coast. We're not far away. Right, no. but I'll have certain environmental little shifts in my microbiome, you know, yeah. and it's quite fascinating because in archaeological studies back in the day, they used to look at microbiomes and go, "Oh, this person was from this kind of corner of the world, and this person oh, from man. here," and you know, um, it, it's quite fascinating because it's your, it's extremely adaptive, and it's yeah. it's adjusting to your environment. Yeah, well, I heard it. Um I heard it put like this, so you'll correct, hopefully you'll correct this if this is wrong, please do, um, that with DNA, we are everyone's fifth cousin. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. And But with, with our microbiome, we are tenth 100%. removed. Yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. So that's how mm. different each individual's microbiome can be, but you're saying also it can have it a little bit to do with the uh, Environment where it actually in there, there's so like you've got the internal environment <laughs> and the, and the genetic predisposition, and then you've got the epigenetic yep. environment, which is you know how your body's responding to itself and the environment it's in. Um, yep. You know, so yeah, and even when you travel, right, like that that can be a challenge to your microbiome. Right? Okay. Well, you fly okay. across yeah. the other side yeah. of the world and you hop off the plane and you're in a different environment and different things in the air yeah. and different seasons and things like that. And, and it's, it's, yeah. it's all, it can all be a good stressor if you're in a good space to adapt to that and you've got the energy yeah. to, right. to invest into that, right, versus playing yeah. catch-up. I understand yeah. that. So yeah. it, it's unique across the board, um, but there is foundational kind of patterns, kind of like, you know, the – the human being, right? You know, we, we generally, we're, we're, we're extremely similar, but so different, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, yeah. In, in that yeah. sense, if that make, you know, so yeah, the microbiome is very similar. So alongside your immunity, alongside your ability to digest food, okay, it plays a big, big role in your ability to detoxify. Okay. All right, um, which is again extremely important. If we look at the pillars of foundational health, you want to make sure that you know you can absorb food and you can detoxify, right? Because that's yep. that's that's key to the system running, right? If they yeah, and what what is the what is the natural detoxification process like? What is what can people expect if they're to- detoxing properly? Sorry, so you mean detoxifying specifically from like a, a dysbiosis or something or just generally? Yeah, like like if it's a healthy detoxification, is it just our digestive, is it just our shit or is it is it also our sweat, oh, so, is, it, is yeah, it coming out of yeah, skin? Yeah, so, so we, we detoxify in, in a number of different ways, you know, through, yeah, that's through our I mean. stool yeah. first and foremost, okay? And that comes yep. back to, yeah, how, how effective is your microbiome, right, at doing that? And we detoxify a lot through our stool. Like you want to make sure yeah. that you can, you know, and we've touched on it before, but, you know, looking at stool quality um, is, is, is a big, big reflection. Just like our teeth are a good external reflection of an internal environment, you know, our, our right. stools are too, you know, and that's why comprehensive okay. stool analysis is, is, is extremely functional and important to looking at the internal environment. So through yeah. stool, through urine, okay, yeah. through our sweat, Okay, um, they play a big, big role um, through that. Our skin, yes, we sweat through our skin, but even just like your skin's detoxifying above and beyond that as well. Um, through our, our, our mouth and our breath, okay, our, 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 our mouth and our nose, through our, um, our eyes as well, our ears, we can just, just detoxify in, in, in gentle, subtle forms through those microbiomes as well. Um, so there's, there's a number of different ways. Right, that that yep. we that we functionally, and when we're looking at it from a stool perspective, yeah, like it's important to pay attention to your stool. 
and check yeah, your shit. Do, do, yeah. do you feel like you can clear and, and empty your bowels? Do you have formed stools, right? Um, you know, do you feel lighter and, 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 and satisfied? You know, when we're not detoxifying well, a lot of times that manifests on that mental, emotional level. Right, mm. irritability, mm-hmm. right, lack of yeah. patience, um, brain fog, yeah. um, reactivity patterns, right, um, yeah. just just a whole host of different kind of symptoms that we can we can get on top of, and 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 I must highlight this, and we've we've touched on it enough, but if you if you if you don't suffer with you know intestinal gas bloatedness, and and you and you have okay stools, but you're extremely irritable. You find it hard to concentrate. There's brain fog. Um, you know, your just general mood, okay, um, might not necessarily be where you desire it to be. Um, as we touched on before, like gratitude and, and fulfillment and things like yeah. that. Yeah, th- those can be gut symptoms. Right, wow. the gut, don't just tie the gut into poop and and oh, well, I'm not bloated and I haven't got you know, a, you know, yeah. an over of intestinal gas. I mean, the gut shows yeah. up; it's connected to everything, and it shows up in so many different things. Yeah, now that's that's the thing that I really want echoed in this, um, in this in this episode and and moving forward. It's just it's not just one size fits all, and that can exercise itself. and And I understand the 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 main two things that I really like. You went there without me even saying it, but the vagus nerve and the microbiome. It's a good start. Um, in this place, and it's not just about the food that we put in our mouth. In fact, because we're so individual. Um, there's certain things that some people shouldn't eat and some people should. Um, eating a healthy life pillar, eating the healthy pillars, and and that's told by testing the gut and the dysbiosis and the symbiosis in the gut, and that's told by testing that. So it shows how individual it is. But what I love, Carl, is the way that you're talking about the human experience and. Um, like you can be healthy and we see a lot of very healthy people that can't handle um, Mm. pressure. They can't handle it. And, and they could be wondering why they can go to every PD bloody conference on the planet and still not handle pressure properly or think they are handling it. But the best way to handle pressure really is to throw yourself in a fire. (laughs) No matter, no matter what you want to go handle pressure. And I quite often have tested myself. I've done different things like a coder. I've done a fight plan, a fight program. I've done all these things to test whether or not basically can I, you know, because in the boxing ring, there's nowhere to hide. You're either going to, you're either going to fight or flight. It's one of the two. And and so, um, and so for me, it's, constantly testing right. can I handle the pressure which absolutely comes back to well it's not just my everyday life it's my business life it's my what I what I'm trying to actually put out there in the world and trying to achieve for the betterment of other people um, but I quite often have seen very very healthy very fit very strong very well well put together people but not be able to handle pressure and that answers a lot of questions mm-hmm. for us because it might not just be something to do with a trauma because and that's another thing that I actually want to I wanted to get out of this episode as well is so often we go, I'm, I'm not right in my mind, I'm healthy in my body, but there's a tra- must be a trauma. So then we go and fabricate it. Or we dig up something that's not really there and go, well, it, it must hmm. be this. And, um, and then all of a sudden that puts us on a process of depression or, or, or anxiety and, and, and things like that. And, and I'm not going to dig right into that, but sometimes it's just our 100%, gut. And, and- one hundred percent, and even remember the remember the term. You've, you, you're you're well aware with with our work and the research you've done as well of prebiotics and probiotics, right? But remember the term yeah. psychobiotics. Okay, it'll be psychobiotics here very soon, right? It's only it's okay. only a matter of time before they're, they're starting to be rolled out, right? But um, yeah, th- th- this is the 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 latest awareness of just how important the gut is to your brain function, wow. to your psychology, okay, to your mental resiliency and ability, as you mentioned, okay, to, to yeah. deal with pressure. Um, yeah, psychobiotics or, or, or mood biotics, right, across that wow. board that was seen so important. And if you look at – if you look at – 
the combination of these aspects, right? And correlation doesn't always mean causation, but we're starting to see a lot. You know, the 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 the, the average human being's gut has deteriorated quite rapidly in the last. 20, 30 plus years, 40 plus years. A number of yeah. different factors at play, um, but we're seeing a, a massive deterioration. On the flip side of that as well, we're starting to see a massive upregulation, right, of depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, mm-hmm. ADHD. We're starting to see Alzheimer's and dementia in 40 year olds, 30 year olds, wow. right? You know, it's, it's, now, it's just something to be aware of. I'm not saying, you know, yeah. that correlation is causation, but but no. put it this way. Understanding the role the gut plays in our, in our, in our mental health and well-being, right, yeah. um, it comes as no surprise at all. No surprise at yeah. all. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's why one of the big reasons why um, I think that you're – such an expert in this space, but that we need to hear this more and more often is that it, it, it's it's more than just, and, and I've written down, is it just about nutrition? But we know it's not. It's more than just putting the right food in your mouth. It's 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 the it's the cold water exposure. It's the saunas. It's the exercise. It's the solitude. Like and I, I can't anchor because I'm a big fan of solitude. And as much as and I, I guess probably being um, being my number one foundational core value of freedom, I don't mind being yeah, by myself. Sure. Um, but but I do know that it takes. You know, I've heard different people say different times, and I can't put a fucking framework around it, and I won't do that. But um, it takes a while to clear the clutter. So, and, and there's no way you can clear the clutter while you're still inside things that are bombarding you with clutter. And so getting that solitude, I think, is probably a really important thing. Carl, I've taken so much of your time this morning um, and there was we, we haven't even got into the episode <laughs> properly. It's really cool. And I, I did want to ask a few more questions, but I'm not going to take any more of your time. I do want to get into, if we can, before we su- uh, wrap all this up, just some tips, some building healthy life patterns I asked you at the beginning before we started recording. Um, if you could put together three um, functional tips for every person to start building a healthy life pattern. So I think you you mentioned one right away, and and particularly for the individual, rebalance that nervous system. Right, just just take a step back for a moment, have it, take a yeah. deep breath. Right, well we're on the tonic treadmill they call life, and no one knows yeah. where the stop button is. Right, and. We are on the bones of our ass when it comes to time, right? People are just getting absolutely torn up by it, right? So take a step back, have a breather, and just connect in with where you are, first and foremost. Get quieter and then listen to what you hear. That's, yeah. that's, that's first and foremost because I'm, like, I'm seeing a lot of sympathetic overdrive, Right, a lot okay. of sympathetic, and that that feeds into everything being suppressed and 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 overworked, right? And eventually, that manifests in the in that physical, mental, emotional layer, right? So yeah. take a step back first and foremost. Get out in some good natural light, okay? More ten before yep. ten, hundred percent, or just 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 yep. Great, fant- if we refine that even further, definitely before 10 a.m. Ideally, you know, within your first half an hour of, of rising. Okay, right? great. Ideally speaking, even on an overcast day, get out there, right? Just get the natural okay. light um, to help that process of balance and, and, and even light exposure for microbiome and, and, and things like that is important. And oh, make sure you're hydrated. Right, I mean, I, I, these are just some. Well, I, mean, I could, I could list you, you know, um, yeah. a lot. But, but, but just, thousand. just taking some common <laughs> themes. Okay, people have yeah. uh, got too much noise in their head right now. Okay, we live in a world where everyone wanted something done last week. Okay, yeah, um, we're not getting enough light exposure. We're indoors mm. a lot. 
under artificial light. Yeah. We are light beings. We've got a light receptor on every cell in our body. Our microbiome is light is a fuel source for our microbiome, right? Wow. So get out and light more. Yeah. And a lot of people are, hyd- are dehydrated. Yeah. And they might even be pushing three, four, five liters of water a day, but they're not absorbing it. Uh, right? Okay. So a that's, little take yeah, with that right good. now because of dr- adrenal and aldosterone dysregulation when the stress is high or, or the adrenals are high. But just, you know, if you are one of those people that you find, well, you know, I'm drinking five liters a day, how, how can I be dehydrated? You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're absorbing it, just like our food. Put a pinch of sea wow. salt, just natural Himalayan salt or rock salt in the water, okay? Um, or a good quality, low sugar, glucose electrolyte. Uh, but I'd recommend just some good natural rock salt or Himalayan salt and put a pinch of that in, in, in each glass you, you drink um, and start to see how you feel. But those those are just some initial takes. As, as you mentioned, Nath, I mean, even with the vagus nerve, you know, I've given you some real basic starting points. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's deeper layers and phases that I, that I take clients through, but I also challenge the individual to hit some prereqs first, um, you know, and, and start with those. And once that's moving, yeah. then we can, when we can work our way and process through. Yeah, that's awesome. So the three the three tips are is is really get where your feet are, you know, get get present and get some solitude, uh, get get some good UV, get some good sunlight on you, even if it's overcast, you still get it. Um, so half an hour after you wake up or within that first half an hour, and uh, if that's not possible, then ten after ten before ten, uh, that's one of Robbo's. And, uh, and also get hydrated. And what was interesting about that is I do know some people, and I do know quite a lot of people who drink a lot of water, but um, they're, but they're not mm. hydrated. So um, I stick a little bit of the uh, Celtic rock salt, sea salt <laughs> in my uh, – and water, not the – yeah, I'm in my water every day. So uh, I, I love that. I'm, I'm making sure that those – some of those are my patterns as well. So – we, we also asked you to actually set a challenge for us, for our listeners, Carl, just before we uh, wrap up. And uh, so what have you come up with, mate? The challenge for people, okay, is to yeah. um, apply the 5-10-15 digestion rule. Okay, as, as I mentioned cool. before, we're kind of on the go. We, we, we're we almost like seagulls the way we eat. We take a couple of bites, we're swallowing, uh, we're, we're, we're up, we're racing, and we're, we're up and down and around. So I encourage you to just connect with your meal, put your phone down, you get off your, your emails and whatever it might be. Connect with your food, take five deep nasal breaths before you start, get your nervous system into a digest system. As we mentioned before, it doesn't matter if you have this beautiful meal in front of you, if you're if you if you if you and if you can't absorb it, what happens, right? Okay, food starts to sit around and yeah. putrefy in your gut and feed that pathogenic bacteria. Okay, okay, and that's when we start to proliferate into certain numbers. So, five deep breaths. Okay, try and have ten seconds between mouthfuls, and try okay. and try and chew your food at least fifteen times, at least. Wow. Okay. okay. They have it five, ten, yeah. fifteen. I mean, there's, there's a host of things, but just with digestion right now, we are. Always eating on the run, uh, in, in a hurry. hurry. Um, you know, yeah. human beings. We have a very short transit time. We don't. We have one stomach. We don't have two. We don't ferment food. Um, just mm-hmm. ground yourself and 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 connect into that. And the reason why I say this is a challenge, because the amount of feedback I get from <laughs> from clients to go, geez, it wasn't till I became aware of that that, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't chew my food. I, okay. I eat in a, in, a, in a hurried state. I two minutes after I don't even taste my food, right? It's just a it's just wow. this mechanical process now, right? I'm completely yeah. elsewhere, right? Okay. So yeah, because it, because it, 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 it's a it's a challenge that's often overlooked, right? Yeah. Well, that's our well, that's our challenge to add to the other challenges: the five, ten, fifteen. So that is, take five internal nasal breaths before you start. 10 seconds between each mouthful and chew each mouthful 15 times. Uh, that's going to be a good challenge and uh, I love it. And, uh, mate, I um, absolutely have loved having you on so far. We're going to be doing this again, obviously, with a lot more stuff to get into with with the health. Um, 
I just have a couple of little questions I have for you. If there was something that you could say to someone who's who's actually, and I know what you will say, but, well, actually, no, I don't. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Um, someone that's really confused with, there's so much information out there right now. Um, like there's, there's plant-based, there's carnivore, there's this, there's that, there's see a doctor, there's, there's, see, there, there's all this information out there and they're confused about how to move forward with their health, whether they're in a okay healthy state or whether they're in a really bad healthy state. Um, what is your very simple advice for that person? Well, first and foremost, remember, as you mentioned, you know, there's never a one-size-fits-all plan, right? Like if anyone tells you that, hey, I've got the right diet for you and this is the plan for everyone and everyone needs to be doing yeah. this, that's a good sign to, to, to hit the exit, right? Okay, because okay. there's there isn't like – just we've got to get real we're, we're unique we're different um and there's there's certain foundations my advice to someone in that sense first and foremost is one take it right reach out right ask, ask questions um there it's, it's a very confusing world out there and it's done for a great reason right um and it's not just the health space that, that that's confusing um industries are great at making things confusing so i mm. encourage people to listen to your intuition have the courage to yeah. ask good quality questions with people you trust and connect with or resonate with um and be a good healthy skeptic yeah, right good. even with what i've said to you today right i encourage yeah. you go go and go and yeah, you don't have to, but like yeah. I said, go go and look into it if if you want, or yeah, go and research the vagus nerve if it's if it's you know um, interested you or whatever whatever has today, right? Be be a be a healthy skeptic, and what I mean by yeah, that is, good. yeah, we're given two eyes for a reason. Keep them both open, mm. all right, and make sure we're looking at the bigger picture and not the world through a straw. Mm, that's awesome. That's that's great advice, mate. And and um, the reason that like I trust Carl because I I was uh, um, promoted. Carl was promoted to me by someone else that I trust really deeply. And and that's the thing is like Carl, what Carl's saying is you've you've got to find some trusted information in this in this world. Um, but I absolutely believe that everyone needs a Carl Hewitt in their life. And um, so I hope that you get bombarded now. And I know how busy you are with two little kids and a thriving thriving business, but I do hope you get bombarded. Um, and um, there could be no greater place to start than the gut and the and the and the understand the vagus nerve. We really need to understand those pieces of science. And I'm interested to find out what the psychobiotics what comes out of that, yeah. mate. Thank you so much about um, for having a being giving us this time um we've gone over a little bit over time and I, I just so appreciate your time um and your energy and your thrive and your froth on life and the way you do things um so how can people connect with you mate uh instagram email yeah, what do we got instagram, here instagram my website carlhewan.com um my my instagram carlhewan.com um email yep those, those channels um feel free to reach out if, if you have any queries or anything like that at all um i'll get back to you as as, as soon as possible um but yeah like i said just if, if, if there's anything there and you want to connect just just feel free to to reach out and and on that uh yeah. nath you know i appreciate your time as well mate you're doing some some fantastic work there and a credit to yourself first and foremost on on your journey um and the action you take and then the value that you're you're putting out there with your podcast and just you being you oh mate i appreciate that and that is um that's carl k-a-r-l-h-u-g-h-e-n uh, A-N, A-N. At- A-N, A-N. Um, that's his Instagram handle. Mate, oh, thanks for the, the praise. I appreciate that. And uh, it all goes to a worthy cause, mate. We want to see humans do better 100%. Every day. 100%. It's been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Oh, awesome, mate. We'll check out here. That was the end of another episode. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would love for you to rate, review, and subscribe as this will help me get my message out to more people. If you've heard anything today that has resonated with you, 
please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Nath Cartledge. All the other ways to contact me will be in the show notes. I'd love to chat and hear your thoughts. Can't wait to Conflab next week.